What is going on guys, it's Blurry here and welcome back to another video. We have another terrifying true report today. This one is on Diphenhydramine. This is a 5,000 milligram experience. Um, there's a post here they made about it. Um, and it was, it's meant to be the highest dose of DPH ever recorded in a report um, that someone has lived off of, which is crazy. If that's true, that is absolutely absurd. Apparently it's two to three times the lethal dose um, and they didn't die, which is just crazy. So if all that's true, that's, that's absurd. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. Quickly shout out the channel members, Patreons. We have Carlos, Spicy Wiener, Cincy Nate, L Prof, Callum Kirby, Nick Conkey, Val Skates, Mike Sterlek, J Mac, Pepe Harambe, Nick Poker, The Archaic Bard, and Marlon Chase. Uh, <laughs> big shout out to all those guys for helping support the channel and keeping it going. If you guys do enjoy this one, be sure to smash a like down below and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. That really does help me out a ton, guys. And without further ado, Let's get into this story, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. Peace. This is a story of depression, stupidity, and luck. Although the events you are about to read are only a few hazy memories, flashbacks, and witness reports, I hope you will find my journey into the depths of hell that is diphenhydramine to be an interesting tale. Vital Statistics this happening took place a few months after my 15th birthday. I had been in a deep depression for well over a year by now. I am male, and although I was quite tall for my age, around 5 foot 10, I only weighed around 110 to 120. This was partly because I am just skinny, and partly because I rarely ate. It was no eating disorder, I was just too damn sad to do anything. I had been smoking pot frequently. I found it helped with the stress and depression, and it helped keep me occupied. This escalated to a daily smoking habit after this event. I have no drug allergies that I know of. Background. I'll keep this short since my life story is pretty boring. I was a sophomore in high school, and it had been a little over a year since I stopped taking Prozac. I was prescribed this in 5th grade and it messed me up bad. I felt like it made a bubble around me, keeping out all the sad things, but all the happy things as well. I felt like a zombie. In the summer preceding my freshman year of high school, I abruptly ceased use, dealt with a lengthy and extremely unpleasant withdrawal, but came out of it relatively unscathed. I began high school with a newfound hope for happiness. This was quickly destroyed by the death of my grandfather after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. My mother was a wreck, unable to take care of me and my little brother. My best friend in the world, my stepfather, was fighting off alcohol withdrawal after quitting his 12-pack-a-day habit called turkey. My father, who I was very close with, lived 250 miles away and I only saw him every other weekend. I slowly recovered from this over the winter, and just when it seemed things were getting better, I received two pieces of crushing news. My grandmother, on the other side of my family from the already dead grandpa, was diagnosed with cancer as well. My father, delivering the news, knew that the worst was coming, but remained hopeful. Right around this time, my mother informed me we would be moving to be closer to my dad leaving my stepdad 250 miles away in the process, and eventually causing their divorce. This was equally crushing, and although I was happy to be around my dad, I became even more depressed. I started school and was miserable. I spent my 14th birthday in the hospital with my grandma where she died two days later. My only friend I was able to make moved out of town. I was miserable. I wanted out. I tried to keep things in chronological order, but I really can't remember the exact context of events. This is a retelling of the story way out of whack time-wise. Here is where things get hazy. It started with the desire to escape reality. I had no weed, and I was feeling a bit more self-destructive. 
I had researched DPH and figured, why the hell not? I ate dinner and then took a decent dose of it. I marveled at the ease with which I could take the pills. As time went on, I felt nothing. I took more. I counted 900 milligrams. Whoa there, buddy, said my subconscious. You know this is too much. Just wait for it to kick in. You don't want to overdose it and die, do you? I pondered the question. Did I? Of course. I just didn't have what it took to pull that trigger. Push down on the blade and step off the chair. But taking those pills had been so easy. I could go out in a drug fueled euphoria. Not even noticing as life slipped from my body. The idea sounded more and more appealing as I counted 1500. I could be gone. 2000. I could get away from this all. 2500. Nobody would ever again have to listen to poor little me wallowing in a pool of self-pity. 3000. Of course I want to die. I need to die. The world's better off without me. 3500. I stopped counting handfuls of pills down my mouth. There is no turning back. I have condemned myself. I tip the bottle upside down and nothing comes out. Have I done it? Have I taken enough? There were 250 25 milligram pills in that bottle. It wasn't brand new or anything, but we got it when we moved in. And it's not like you consume that much Benadryl in five months. I figured I should be good and sat at my computer waiting for the darkness to envelop me. I don't know how long I sat there waiting to feel something, anything, to signal my impending doom. I look up at my bedroom wall and see a crack. Not even a crack, really. Just a little line in the paint. As I stare at this seam, a tarantula creeps its way out from it. The delirium had set in, and although I was convinced what I saw was real, I was only mildly interested. I look closer and realize that tarantulas are not normally a foot and a half long. He seems to react to this realization and begins to fly through the air towards my head. About a foot away from impact, it vanishes in a puff of smoke. Intrigued, forgetting immediately that I had taken enough Benadryl to kill an elephant, I text a new friend of mine describing the spider and its flight. He responds worryingly, asking if I'm okay. I respond with a, lol, I'll tell you tomorrow in school. I look up from my phone, and there he is, sitting in my room. I remember the exact clothes he was wearing. Khaki pants, hiking boots, a black petticoat, and a Detroit Hustles harder hat that was black with purple writing and a green brim. His headphones were draped around his neck, with the cord trailing into his pocket. Probably plugged into his phone, I thought. Wait a minute, what is Joe doing here, I thought, as I snapped back to what I believed to be reality. I forgot this soon enough, though, as he struck up a conversation with me. I don't remember the words, but his presence was comforting to me. It was nice knowing there was someone to accompany me to death. Soon, my mother in her room next to mine wonders who I am talking to. She calls out to me, and I respond saying, It's just Joe. He stopped by to get something he left here. She lays back in bed, reassured. That is until she realizes that the only person she hears talking is me. She calls out, but I do not answer, probably lost in my own world. Worried, she knocks on my door. And when I don't respond, she opens it to find me sitting on my bed, talking to people who aren't there. She doesn't know if I'm on drugs or just having a mental breakdown. She takes me into her room, trying to comfort me, as I apparently become agitated when she entered my room. The Pieces of the Trip I am immersed in soft. What is this soft white all around me? My math homework. This seems right. As equations trace their way across the white fabric of the comforter in my mother's bed, I am immersed in it, rolling around as complex theories and numbers 
incomprehensible to the human mind raced around my vision. I try to solve the math with a sharpie. My mother is not happy about me ruining her blanket. My ego breaks through. For only a moment, I'm being torn apart inside, reborn, an endless cycle of death and rebirth. I would reach the peak of an incomprehensible journey, only to be ripped back to near baseline. Then I would sit in confusion as the other dimensions started to creep into my peripheral vision. I'm finally me again. I made it. Wait, where am I? How did I get from my living room to this strange place? Who am I? I'm me again. And so, it continued. I died thousands of times, every death as real to me as the computer I typed this on. Tangible. What this, what I wanted? Why? I became incredibly interested with the way things work. I started to take things apart. My little brother's Halo action figures. As I struggle to pull the arm off, my eyes roll back and I collapse to the couch yet again. Off for another journey. My little brother looks for the arm, but to no avail, it is still missing to this day. I walk up the stairs. I'm not seeing things anymore, but my ego is nowhere to be found. Where are you, you little devil? My dad is here now. He walks up the stairs behind me and turns me around. How much LSD did you take? He asks. He knows about that kind of thing. He was a deadhead. He saw Jerry... And I, wait, he saw Jerry, this isn't like that, Dad. There's no love, nothing to learn, only me. It's awful, it's dirty. This is on a whole other level, a bad level. It's almost funny. I chuckle to myself. I didn't take any LSD, I say as I chuckle even more. Why the fuck is this funny? He looks at me. I'm your dad, I love you. I'm not mad at you at all. But we need to know what's happening to help you. Wait, this clown thinks he's my dad? That's fucking hilarious. You aren't my dad, I cackle, almost maniacally. Oh look, what's that creeping over my field of vision? Is that me? I better go find it. As I am transported to another world yet again. I look into my dad's eyes and chuckle again. It really is pretty funny. I sit on the couch in the living room. My dad just carried me here from the stairs and put me here. I'm already alive again. My deaths were often but short-lived. My parents pace around me, trying to convince me that they are in fact my parents. I am still quite amused and continue to assure them that they most certainly are not. All the while, I am holding back fits of laughter. This is the laughter of a madman. The way the Joker laughs while he commits horrible crimes. I am insane. My mother can't take it anymore and slaps me in the face, hoping to snap me out of whatever she thought was happening. I bite her hand and she pulls back, shocked at my savagery. I see the madness. Now I have made her see the madness. I am sitting on a lump, a mound. It is black. The only colour that I can see. Around me is an endless field of grey cloudy ground. Above me, the same. I sit for eons. As I sit, a circle of tall, black, humanoid figures rises out of the ground around me. They seem to be about 12 feet tall, and are quite slender and devoid of any features. They are made of the same cloudy mist that seems to make up everything in this world. I am at the back of the circle. The being behind me is quite close, and the one in front of me is at the opposite end of the circle, about 10 feet away. I sat there, immobilized with fear. I finally found it, death. This was what I wanted. At least, I think that was me that wanted that. Why did I want something so scary? I'm a fucking idiot. I need to get out of here. This isn't where I belong. Shit, it could be where I belong. I don't even know who I am. I could have been born here. I will die here. 
No. I'm not just letting them take me. I can feel it. We have been here for weeks. They will make their move any time now. I need to strike first. I'll have the advantage. I forget about the beings behind me and stand up. I am ready to kill everything in sight. I'm going out kicking and screaming and shit. I forget about the ones behind me again. I've been stabbed. It's done. I'm done. I scream. A scream of pain, fear and regret. The wound in my back takes its toll and I fall to the ground. I am dead. For real this time? It has been a little over 34 hours since I began tripping. My little brother watches me, sitting on the bottom bunk of our old bunk beds in his room. I was a wreck, sitting there fearing for my life, eyes wide with terror, pupils like dinner plates. I'm covered in sweat. What must I have looked like to him? His older brother, I took care of him. We only had each other for so long. Now here I was slipping away. As he looked at me, I stood abruptly. In the process, I hit my back quite hard on the top bunk. I scream, that same scream of fear, pain and regret. I scream and I scream and I scream. For real this time, I say, as I fall to the ground. Now it is his scream. My parents rush into the room and carry me downstairs onto the couch. My dad kneels beside me. There is nothing he can do for me now. He just sits by my side, holding my hand. My eyes shoot open. I gasp awake. What the fuck am I doing on the couch? Why is my dad holding my hand? Shouldn't I be getting ready for school? I look at my dad and remember the sight of the bottom of the bottle. That's right, I'm dead. I ask my father, am I dead? He looks at me, wondering if this is really his son speaking, not just the drug. I hug him. He hugs me. We burst into tears. No, you aren't dead. You are right here with me. You are safe now, he says. This is quite reassuring. I am quite. I am quickly rushed to the hospital. I do not say what I did. Instead, I say I took 200 milligrams trying to fall asleep. The doctors think I am allergic to the drug, and also an idiot. I am drug tested, and I come up clean. This is surprising since I smoked weed not three days earlier. Huh? I go home still feeling not quite right. What happened? All I remember is a tarantula and then dying. Dying over and over again. I still feel off. Things still look off. There is a distinct tonality to everything that was not there before. I fall asleep early that night, hoping to sleep off these damn after effects. The Aftermath It's been years since that happened. I am still seeing things. Visual snow clouds my whole vision. When it is dark outside, I am treated to a beautiful fireworks display of thousands of millions of exploding dots of colour that only I can see. When a car drives by, the lights leave distinct and long traces. I close my eyes. Right now, as I write this, I close my eyes. Huh? A rainbow and a sky and a beautiful forest. All on the inside of my eyelids. Now the rainbow landscape are gone. Rainbow and landscape are gone. I can see played. Soon that gives way to God only knows what that is. It is entertaining, almost. I open my eyes and can see shapes, places where the snow is more dense. It is making my wall polka dots right now. My mind. What a dump it has become. My train of thought has no fuel. I jump randomly from one thought to the next, too quickly to ever properly articulate myself in a conversation. Something else feels off up there, like if you left your house for a very long vacation and returned to find that everything was in a new place. I feel better mentally. I'm not quite so fucking sad all the time. By no means am I cured of my depression. I still struggle with it very often. Weed helps, so I smoke every day. This doesn't do much to help the HPPD, but I sure as hell would rather see shit than be that fucking miserable. 
That summer, I experimented with research chemicals that I was led to believe were LSD. It was actually 25i the first time I dropped, and AMT the second time. The 25i was amazing, I saw so much beauty and had not felt that comfortable in my own mind since the happening. The second time, I got cocky. The AMT got me in a pretty bad headspace. I did it with the spider friend, Joe. He had since become my trip buddy, having much more experience than me with Blotter, although he sure as hell has never been as far as I have. We had the same conversation at least 10 times while we biked around. I was terrified, but I knew that I could handle it. I thought about the Benadryl and scoffed. This was nothing, I would be fine. That ended my foray into psychedelics. That is until we found a hookup for real LSD. This is when the pieces of the trip started coming back to me. My first dose of LSD I didn't notice for a long time. It was difficult for me to differentiate between the shit I already saw and the shit it was making me see. Alrighty, well that's pretty much it. He kind of goes in a little bit more detail here about um, just you know a future trip on LSD and stuff like that, but. I'm not going to read all that because it, it is a, a little long and, you know, it's not really rare, not really related to the report uh, we, we actually just read out. But that was a really interesting one. I probably would like some fact checks down there in the comments because I'm not an expert on, um, you know, this drug and I just want some fact checks just to see, can you actually get HPPD off of... Uh, uh, diphenhydramine and the dose he took is that would that normally kill someone or is this like do you guys think that he actually took that amount because i've never read a report ever as anywhere close to the amount of milligrams as this i don't think anyway i think what does he say here 3500 milligrams i don't think i've read a report like that so if you know someone could fact check it that would be good but i you know this one just got sent to me by an anonymous user and it is um how says it got posted like he sends me a link to a site and it was posted in 2014 so it's a very old report um but yeah if all this is true that's absolutely absurd you know a very very crazy trip it was like he was almost having random dmt sort of things like he was spacing out a reality and going to other worlds and then yeah, it was a very confusing report. It was a little bit all over the place, but it was very mental. Uh, one of my questions is, like, why didn't his parents take him to the hospital straight away? I think he said, uh, like, he got to, like, the 32-hour mark or something like that, and then they took him to the hospital. They already knew he was tripping, and, like, a few hours in by the... Like, that's what it seemed like, right? So why didn't they take him to the hospital then, but then take him to the hospital, like, a whole day later? That just doesn't make... It doesn't make sense to me, but... <laughs> it was an insane report um i hope you guys did enjoy this one nevertheless i mean it was still a dope story um i thought it was a good one and if you guys did be sure to leave a like and a comment uh, i know it was like three delirium stories in a row the last few videos but <laughs> i will switch it up be sure to tell me down in the comments below uh what substances you guys would like me to uh find reports on next and also I need some more reports, so be sure to send them in to my email. It is in the description. Um, but yeah, leave a like if you guys did enjoy this one and a comment down below. And I'll see all you guys in a video very, very soon. Peace out, guys.